Suddenly, there was a thundering crash from the central cave. Clay heard the entrance boulder slam back into place, and then the rumble of heavy footsteps. From the extra squish-flap sound of them, he knew that must be webs. Something's happening, Tsunami said. She hurried to the door, her ears twitching and the spiny ridge along her back staying straight up. We have to go listen. Starflight spread his wings slowly. I'm not, I'm sure we'll find out what the fuss is in the morning. I don't want to wait that long. Tsunami spun around to jab his underbelly with her tail, and he tipped backward with a grunt. Don't be a smoke breather, let's go! Clay winced at his sore muscles sprang into action. He followed Glory to the central cave. Glory's scales were already changing to match the molded gray and black rocks. In a moment, she'd be nearly impossible to see. Starflight slipped past to join her, and the two of them hurried away toward the tunnel that led to the big dragon's cave. They vanished almost immediately into the shadows. Hidden by the coloring, they'd get as close as they could to eavesdrop. But Clay and Tsunami had an even better shot of hearing everything, if they hurried. Tsunami was already charging across the cave to the river. What about Sunny? Clay called quietly. He could hear the little sandwing rummaging around in her sleeping cave, putting scrolls away. We'll come up with something to tell her later, Tsunami hissed back. Clay felt sorry that Sunny was the only one who didn't know about their spying games, but they learned their lesson about trusting her with secrets years ago. Sunny hadn't meant to tell Dune about the pile of rocks the Dragonettes were collecting. Their plan was to build a tower to the sky hole, back when they were too small to fly. They had only wanted to stick their heads out and look around. But one day, Sunny forgot to be careful around Dune, and the next day all the collected rocks were gone from their hiding place. That was the end of that plan, and of Sunny getting to know anything. Tsunami disappeared into the river with a nearly soundless splash. The pale green flicks under her dark blue scales shimmered as she swam upward. Clay dove in after her, wishing he could see in the dark like she could. At least she remembered to activate the glow-in-the-dark stripe along her tail. Mudwings couldn't breathe underwater like sea wings, but they could hold their breath for more than an hour. So whenever the dragonettes wanted to spy on their guardians, Clay and Tsunami could use the river to get closer than the others. He caught up with the sea wing as she was wriggling through the underwater gap in the cave walls. It made Clay nervous every time, squeezing through such a small space. He wished he hadn't eaten that extra cow at dinner. His claws scrabbled on the rocks, catching in the crevices. There was a brief, terrifying moment as his midsection got stuck. Would he drown down here? Would the prophecy be ruined because of an extra cow? Then, with the whoosh of bubbles, he popped through and shot after Tsunami. Her tail stripe went dark as they swam quietly into the Guardian's cave. The three older dragons hardly paid any attention to the river, except for Webbs, who sometimes slept in the shallows. It never occurred to them that two pairs of dragonette ears might be poking out of the water listening. Clay drifted to a stop near the entrance, while Tsunami swam to the far side of the room. That way, at least one of them could hear, no matter where the minders were talking. Tonight, however, Clay was pretty sure everyone could hear everything, including Glory and Starflight in the passageway outside. From the way Kestrel was shouting, it was possible even the sky wings up in the mountain peaks could hear her. Coming here? With no warning? After six years, suddenly he's interested? A jet of fire shot out of her snout and blasted the nearest rock column. Maybe he wants to make sure they're ready to stop the war, Webb suggested. Dune snorted. These dragonettes... Then he's going to be very disappointed. He eased himself onto a flat boulder, stretching his foreleg stump and mangled wing toward the fire. The big sand-winged dragon never discussed his scars or how he lost his foot, but the dragonettes would guess from the anger in his voice whenever he talked about the war. The fact that he couldn't fly was probably why he was chosen for underground dragonette minding duty. He clearly wasn't picked for his warm, nurturing personality. We've done our best, Webb said. The prophecy chose these dragonettes, not us. Does he even know what happened? Kestrel demanded. Does he know about the broken egg and the rain wing? Or the defective sand wing? Clay winced. Poor Sonny. He floated closer, keeping his bulky brown length below the surface of the dark water. Through the ripples, he could see the blurred shapes of the large dragons gathered around the fire. Webb's flapped his wings. I'm not sure he knows what or why he cares. Meza just said Morosiwa is coming. I'm supposed to meet him and bring him tomorrow. 
Morrow Seer. That sounded familiar. Clay racked his brain. A dragon from history class? One of the tribe rulers? No, it couldn't be. All the tribes were ruled by queens. I'm not worried about Sunny, Dune said. We followed the prophecy's instructions. It's not our fault she's the way she is. But the Rainwing, he's not going to like that. A deep growl rumbled in Kestrel's throat. I don't like it either. I never have. Glory's not that bad, Webbs argued. She's smarter than she wants us to know. You overestimate her because you brought her here, Dune said. She's lazy and worthless to the rest of her tribe. And she's not a Skywing, Kestrel snapped. We're supposed to have a Skywing. Clay wished Glory didn't have to hear all this. The Guardians never hid how they felt about her, and she never acted like she cared. But he wished he could tell her that she was just as important and smart as any Skywing. Well, I never thought Morosir would come look at them, Webb said. After he dropped off Starflight's egg, I assumed we'd never see him again. The Nightwings had nothing to do with the war. So he is a Nightwing, which means super-powered and mysterious and full of himself. That was all Clay could remember about Nightwings. He found himself actually wishing he could get a lecture from Starflight. The epic wonderfulness of Nightwings was the Black Dragonette's favorite topic. Did the Talon say what he wants? Kestrel asked. Well, it's his prophecy, Webb said. I guess he wants to make sure it's actually come true. Moroseer. Clay felt a jolt run through him, like the stinging shock he'd sometimes got when Dune whacked him with his barbed tail for not paying attention. Moroseer was the Nightwing who had spoken the Dragonette prophecy ten years ago. They had learned about him in history, but it was one of the many facts Clay could never remember. Who had delivered the prophecy never seemed as important as who was in the prophecy. But maybe Morrow Sierra was more important than Clay had realized. After all, he was coming to see them. Perhaps he would take them out into the world. Perhaps they didn't need to escape after all. Perhaps everything was about to change.